I had a pinching problem caused by the tunnel sagging under its own weight, but I couldn't add any support directly under the structure as I wanted Sonic to roll freely through the tunnel. I did try an external plate supporting the front side of the tunnel, but it surprisingly didn't help. If we examine this screen grab closely, we can see that the curved arches sit just that little bit tighter against neighbouring bricks, so it seemed that any extra internal support may not have been of any use. I realised I could physically widen the tunnel by just half a plate by swapping out the snot bricks for a plate and tile, but this would only widen the tunnel after the pinch point. To align the outer curve with the checkered tiles, I'd had to add a brick to bridge the gap to the newly lowered floor, but simply removing the brick would create a half plate gap, so I had to shift the whole tunnel over and rework the frame and the facade to fit. Following many hours of reworking, I gave the tunnel a test run, and Sonic rolled perfectly through the widened gap. However, testing the tunnel with the lift arms threw me a curveball, which I'd kind of anticipated but had hoped wouldn't be an issue. As Sonic returned down the tunnel, the lower lift arm had rotated back around and was blocking his passage. My first thought was rotating the arms at different speeds, but that would create a desynchronisation that would get worse with each rotation. I could perhaps rotate the lower arm at half the speed of the upper arm, but then Sonic would suddenly speed up halfway up the tunnel. What if I could stop the lower arm for the duration of one rotation of the upper? I'd need to physically disconnect the gears, which I was kind of doing with the driver for the swing but that system was selecting either output A or output B. What if I could move the lift arm out of the way while still rotating? If I removed the gears from a gear selector, then the axles would move with the driving ring and could move a lift arm in and out of position. Then I could keep gears meshed with a second driving axle by using a pair of gears, so one was always in contact but the motion would need to be short and sharp, not a continuous oscillation, and once the position was changed, it would need to be held there. I had a prototype mechanism from another planned part of the build, in which a small gear is connected to a larger gear and briefly makes contact with a third gear with each rotation of the larger gear. This generates small incremental steps in the rotation of the third gear, which is exactly the short, sharp movement I'm looking for. I wanted the arm to move two units distance, to make sure it was definitely going to miss Sonic on his way back down the tunnel. It looked like my prototype was moving far enough, but I wasn't confident it was starting and returning to the same place each time, so I asked Tink for a second opinion, but she wasn't sure either. I needed the lift arm at the output to rotate 180 degrees with each movement, and I recalled seeing a video that demonstrated perfect 90 degree rotations, so if I could recreate that and gear up the output to a 1 to 2 ratio, I'd get my 180 degrees. Luckily I just so happened to have the gears I needed, and a new prototype rig looked good, but nothing ever works easily in my builds. After building the mechanism onto the main framework, it was occasionally jamming, and I couldn't understand why. I poked and prodded at it for a while, and finally managed to trace it right back to the very first gear. Every few rotations, the gear's teeth were colliding with the teeth of the second gear, instead of slipping between and meshing. Having no idea how to fix the issue, I consulted my unofficial technic guide, searching for any alternative solutions or inspiration, but instead came across a solution for a different problem. A stepper motor uses a lift arm and an elastic band to clamp down on a turn wheel and prevent it from rotating freely, which is just what I needed to prevent my mechanism slipping out of position. It worked like a charm. That is, until I assembled the rest of the mechanism. But this jamming wasn't caused by the first two gears. This was a new jam. Following some more poking and prodding, I found that I'd connected the stepper's output to the wrong point on the moving axle. Shifting it forward one unit got it working smoothly again. Giving it a test run, it was pretty clunky, which I think was down to the framework flexing as I turned the handle, 
so I made some changes to the frame and ran the test again. Oh good, a new problem. This one was quite an easy one. The first arm was shifting over too early, and simply needed to be disconnected and wound on a little so it shifted after the changeover. Ok, next problem. Sonic falls off at the top. Needs extra brickwork to form a physical barrier to prevent him falling. Cat on the table preventing progress. Cat must be fussed over to be appeased. Ok, let's try this again. Still looking a bit clunky, but overall a success. With the mechanism working, I now needed a way to return Sonic to the mechanism. Rather than creating a mechanism for the mechanism, I had a couple of simpler ideas in mind. I could either have a small ramp stop him and roll him back, or I could bounce him off a spring. With Sonic weighing so little, he wouldn't have any impact on a shock absorber, but maybe an elastic band would work. That looks promising, though I wasn't keen on having a band stretched across the build. I'd want to conceal or disguise it in some way. The game makes heavy use of springs, so it'd be perfect if I could disguise the elastic band as a spring. I put together a test rig, loosely resting a tile against the elastic band, but the test run was not successful. I tried again with a lighter weight tile holder, but again, no bounce. I tried one last test with the elastic band stretched behind the axle, and this time there was a little bounce. I played around increasing and decreasing band tension, adding a second band, adding more connectors to stabilise the ram, connecting the band to the ram's head, nothing was really working. The tile was eliminating most of the bounce. I decided that the best way forward would be separating the two, and discreetly installing the elastic band adjacent to the tile, where it wouldn't be seen, but Sonic would still bounce off it. I initially installed the elastic band vertically, as I felt this would be better hidden, but the vertical edge of the rolling dish wouldn't reliably strike the band, so I had to reposition it horizontally. The dish would now reliably strike the band every time, but there were still more issues to contend with. I needed Sonic to return to the base of the lower curve to be picked up by the first lift arm, but he would occasionally fall short or overshoot and roll back toward the band. This wasn't helped by my desk being on level. Another issue was the dishes rubbing against the guide rail, causing a loss of momentum. I had thought about a third arm to push Sonic, but that would mean another shifting mechanism and timing issues to contend with. Perhaps a conveyor belt could work. I wasn't sure what effect rolling against the direction of travel would have, but it wouldn't physically block Sonic and should help him roll back. I theorised that tread links would offer the least resistance as Sonic rolled over them, but Sonic didn't even make it to the elastic band, and then rolled in place instead of being moved by the belt. A rubber track actually gave better performance, both allowing Sonic to roll across it and then conveying him as I wanted. Sort of. But tracks are very limited in length, and I didn't think it would be possible to pass Sonic between two of them. Maybe it didn't have to be this complicated, perhaps I could use gravity to assist with this. If I gave the ground a slight gradient toward the tunnel, would it be enough? 